Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today and for taking the time to attend today's webinar, Colombia, a country to discover. My name is Anna Kamerer. I work with Emerging Destinations. We are a marketing uh, and sales representation company in US and Canada. And today I will be joined by Carolina Nino, marketing manager from Colombian Journeys DMC, who will be conducting this webinar and taking you on a virtual tour over the hidden gems of Colombia. But before starting with today's webinar, I would love uh, to give you all a brief overview of emerging destinations, as well as some uh, a few housekeeping notes uh, on this webinar, okay? So as I mentioned be before, we are a marketing and sales representation company in US and Canada. Uh, we have offices in um, Atlanta, where Jane Barron, the owner and founder of the company, is based. Then I have my colleague Jenna based in Canada, and I'm based in Buenos Aires in Argentina. We have a big, diverse, and adventure portfolio, as you can see on your screen now. Uh, we represent different DMCs, hotels, lodges, and cruises. Um, in different countries in Africa, Europe, and the Americas region. Um, if you have any questions on any of the clients that we have in the portfolio, or maybe want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one, um, training session, please feel free to reach out to me after this webinar. You can see my email address at the bottom. is Anna with one N at EmergingDestinations.com. Um, just to mention, um, we represent DMCs uh, in Africa. We have adventure consults covering Uganda and Rwanda. Um, and then we represent enchanted expeditions in Ecuador, Chile concept in Chile, and of course, today's presenter, Colombian journeys. And uh, sorry, and we also have Paxmore, Greece in Greece. Uh, we also have uh, two companies in Iceland. Iceland Pro Travel is the DMC, DMC, and the sister company is Iceland Pro Cruises, offering sailing adventures around Iceland and Greenland. Keeping on the cruises side, we also have Beluga and Cachalote Explorer from Enchanted Expeditions, offering amazing six and eight days itineraries to the Galapagos Islands. Moving to the lodges and hotels, we represent Anantara Basaruto Island Resort in Mozambique. We represent Atua Encop Africa for amazing lodges in um, Kenya. We also represent in Zambia two beautiful hotels, the, the Royal Livingstone Victoria Falls by Anantara and um, the neighbor and sister um, hotel, which is Biavani Victoria Falls resort. We also represent the Crown Plaza Nairobi Airport in Kenya, the new JW Marriott Masai Mara Lodge in the Masai Mara in Kenya, um, Top Guys Bush Camps offering two amazing camps in Tanzania, Hotel Las Torres Patagonia in Chile, La Coralina Island House, the newest luxury resort in Boca del Toro in Panama, um, we also represent Eco Training, offering amazing wildlife courses in South Africa and the country of Sierra Leone in Africa. So this is our portfolio of cool companies in cool places. Um, before uh, passing everything over to Carolina, just a few housekeeping notes to go over um, this webinar. This webinar is being recorded, so if you need to step away, answer the phone, or do a break for lunch or a cup of coffee, don't worry. We will be sending you this recording uh, next week. This recording will be also uploaded on our website, emergingdestinations.com. There you will find our webinar library where you will find not only this webinar, but also any other past webinar that we have been conducted for any of the clients that we have in the portfolio. And on that section, webinar library, you can also take a look 
uh, on what webinars we are offering in the near future and register for those. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Emerging Destinations, where we are also uploading all those webinars that we are conducting for our clients. Finally, please feel free to ask any questions. You can type those um, on the control panel on your right. At the end of this webinar, Carolina Nino, Marketing Manager of Colombian Journeys DMC, will be joining live from Bogota and she will be answering any question, any doubt you may have um, from this presentation. So uh, let's get started. Um, and I hope you will enjoy this virtual trip as well as learn something new about Colombia. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carolina Niño, and I'm in charge of the marketing department at Colombian Journeys. Uh, so Colombian Journeys, we are um, a boutique DMC with a team uh, passionate about sharing what Colombia has to offer. Uh, we design itineraries with unique experiences um, for your travelers. So, well, welcome to Colombia. Uh, well, Colombia is located in the north of uh, South America and is the only country uh, in South America that have access to the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. So we're about 15 million people. Our official language is Spanish and that is really important because some areas are, well, in some places you will not find like bilingual uh, people easily. Uh, and well, in terms of climate, so Colombia is really privileged because we um, have all known climates uh, zones, like we have tropical rainforest, we have savannas, we have deserts, we have mountain climate. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, basically you can visit the, the country all year round. Uh, we have 365 days of tropical weather we do have the rainy and the dry season, but this, uh, this change depending on the destination that uh, what the region that you are going to visit. Uh, we have six snow, six snow mountains, uh, three deserts, and we have the Andes mountain range across the middle of the country. So geography is like the reason why sometimes you need to include more uh, than a domestic flight uh, in an itinerary. Uh, because, for example, if you are in Bogota, which is here in the middle, um, and you want to go to the Kofor region, well, you can see that it's uh, like very close, but a transfer can take about eight to seven hours. So the weather works like this, like each region has its own weather. So, for example, the Caribbean coast have a warm and a hot weather, like temperatures between 20 eight degrees Celsius to 34 degrees during the whole year. And well, the rainy season, for example, in Colombia, is like uh, between July and August, uh, but this has changed a lot with the, with the, with the climate change. Uh, and uh, you have some cold destinations like Bogota, uh, the temperatures are uh, between 14 to 20 degree, degrees, but in Bogota, you have to be prepared for a rainy and a sunny day at the same time. Um, Colombia is a mega diverse country. It's the second most diverse country after uh, Brazil, uh, but it's the first country in diversity of birds um, and also um, on or in orchids. Uh, we also have a good diversity in butterflies, amphibians, fish, reptiles, plants, mammals. Mm. We are also a multicultural country. We have influences from, uh, from Europe, uh, especially Spanish people. Uh, we have influences from indigenous uh, communities, indigenous groups. Uh, we have influences from African as well. 
Um, so this uh, mix of cultures can be um, like uh, experienced in the gastronomy, in the music, uh, and in the traditions. And something that is really important is that we have 102 indigenous communities like still uh, in the country. So in terms of connectivity, uh, with the United States, we have a really good connection um, because we have more than 300 uh, flights uh, per week. Uh, we have connections with New York, Miami, Los Angeles, Boston, Atlanta, Washington, among other cities. And uh, you can well connect these cities with uh, Bogota, Medellin, Cartagena, um, Pereira, or Armenia in the coffee region. And the airlines that operate those flights are American Airlines, Avianca, Latam, uh, JetBlue, um, also United Airlines, Delta. So um, the connectivity is really good with the United States. So today I would like to uh, show you those uh, hidden gems of Colombia that are still uh, unknown uh, by many. So we are going to start in the north. Um, we are going to Tairona. So to get to Tairona, you can fly from Bogota to Santa Marta and then take a transfer for about one hour and 15 minutes. Or you can also connect this destination with Cartagena because, because it's only a uh, five hours uh, by car um, from Cartagena. So, this place, uh, well, it's for natural, uh, for nature lovers. Um, Tairona National Park uh, is located in the foothills of Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, which is the highest coastal mountain uh, in the world. Um, this place was included among the world's most beautiful destinations, but called in as a magazine. Uh, and here, well, you can enjoy the breathtaking uh, landscapes. Uh, you can enjoy also white sand beaches. Um, it's important to know that, well, the sea in this area have like a, a strong currents. So not all the beaches are allowed for swimming, um, but you can also enjoy like crystal clear water, uh, mangroves here, and also, well, walk in the forest, uh, you can snorkeling in this area. It's a really good spot also for uh, for diving. So uh, another uh, like highlight here is that this place is a part of the ancestral territories of four indigenous communities uh, that um, well who in uh, inhabit in Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. So the ancestral uh, knowledge of these communities was declared uh, as a world heritage by the UNESCO like very recently in November last year. You can visit here, well, some communities to learn a little bit uh, about that ancestral knowledge, about their philosophy of life, their relationship between human and nature, and the universe, and why not uh, to learn with these ladies uh, how to uh, weave a, um, a handbag or a shoulder bag like this. Um, in terms of accommodation, so inside the Tayona National Park, you guys, you can stay in the Echo Huts that are four, uh, 14 um, huts. Uh, in a hill, uh, so you have like really good views, but this is uh, quite basic, is for people that really want to like an immersion in nature, uh, because here you will have well, insects, um, you don't have air conditioning, you will not have a uh, hot water, uh, uh, neither a uh, TV, but well, you have a beautiful landscape and you can uh, like enjoy uh, the nature here. Uh, the park is closed uh, three times uh, per year because the indigenous communities want uh, that this place rest, um, like the environment rest um, 
a little bit and recover. Um, but we also offer uh, other kind of uh, accommodations that uh, have more comfort, like this one that have a pool, rooms have air conditioning, a TV, hot water, um, and but are also close to the beach. But as I mentioned, like the the currents are super strong here, so you go to the sea to take a bath, not to swim. Okay. So now we are going uh, to travel to the south of Colombia. We are going to visit the Amazon. And to get to the Amazon, you have to travel um, by plane from Bogota to Leticia. This uh, is the longest flight uh, here. It takes two hours. And uh, the Amazon um, is known as the Green Heart uh, of Colombia. The infrastructure in the Amazon of Colombia uh, is less developed than in Peru and in Brazil. Uh, it's very basic, this region, but uh, at the same time, is like the Amazon in Colombia is really well preserved. Uh, so the flora and fauna of the place and also the indigenous communities are what make uh, these um, an authentic, uh, an authentic place, an authentic de destination. So for example, well, you have the Amazon River, like beautiful uh, landscape. Uh, and, but you can also uh, find here the largest lotuses, uh, uh, that is the Victoria Regia. Uh, and you can also find different species of fauna, like uh, the black caiman, uh, you can also see the pink dolphins, uh, the glass frog, uh, macaws, well, different kind of birds, uh, and an impressive variety uh, of primates here. So conservation is very important in the Amazon. And uh, we support some foundations here in the Amazon. When you travel there, uh, you are like also supporting them uh, to preserve the flora and the fauna of the place. So, um, for example, well, Puerto Nariño is a really good example of sustainability and conservation. Uh, this was like this town was certified as the first town in Colombia, uh, the first sustainable town in Colombia because of the way that they manage their resources, water, electricity, uh, and also uh, the conservation that they. Uh, support uh, for like the flora and fauna. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, well, this place is also home to the great uh, cultural wealth. So you can uh, spend some time with the indigenous culture. We can talk with the leader of some communities uh, to learn about their traditions, their, their beliefs, uh, and also about uh, medicinal plants. The accommodation here, well, our suggestion is to stay in, in Kalanoa, a Kalanoa Lodge. Uh, this place is immersed in nature, uh, is close to the river, and at, at, at it's in like in the jungle. A Kalanoa Lodge was awarded at one of the best 20 hotels in the world uh, by Condé Nast Traveler. So it's a really good. Um, a really good lodge uh, in, in, in the area. So now we are going um, to visit a unique destination, uh, which is Caño Cristales. Caño Cristales is located in uh, Sierra de la Macarena uh, National Park. Um, so to go to this area, you can fly from Bogota, from Villavicencio, or from Medellín to uh, La Macarena. You can visit La Macarena in two different seasons. So from June, from late June to November, uh, well, this is the landscape that you are going to find because you are going to visit uh, Caño Cristales, uh, which is known as the Rainbow River or the Seven Color River. Um, and the idea is to go and see, well, the, the landscape. 
uh, what may, like what gives the color to to the water, well, to the river, um, is the Macarena clavillera, that is a, a plant that uh, grows in the surface of the rock uh, during the rainy season, and then uh, after the rainy season, with the sunlight, well, gives all the colors um, to to the water. Uh, in this season, uh, well, from June to November, you will visit like some of the arms of the river. Uh, this, play, this river has uh, three arms. Um, you can take a bath in natural pools. You can enjoy the Janeiro culture. The Janeiros are like the cowboys uh, in Colombia. Uh, well, you can contemplate the landscape, also have a horse, uh, a horse ride uh, and see, well, the fauna of the place. And during the summer season, you are going to visit a completely different area. Uh, this is from March uh, to, from December to March. Uh, you can visit uh, Ciudad uh, de Piedra and Angosturas, go uh, by the river, by Guayabero River. Uh, that is a, a great place for uh, spotting wildlife. Um, and Ciudad de Piedra uh, is a valley full of rock formations uh, that were sculpted by wind and water. And uh, Angosturas is a place where you can find some petroglyphs that were made by, by the Chiniguas and the Guayaberos uh, that were um, some uh, indigenous communities that were made, uh, in the area. So, in terms of accommodation in Caño Cristales, the best option uh, in the area is La Manigua Lodge. Uh, this is a sustainable place um, that is immersed in the tropical forest. Uh, they have five cabins. Um, the gastronomy uh, of this uh, lodge is really good. Uh, from the cabin, you can see, well, like the fauna, like different kinds of birds and also uh, some monkeys uh, in the area, but it's a place that is not for everyone uh, because uh, they have like dry uh, toilets, okay? Now, after visiting um, Caño Cristales, we are going to continue with the Janeiro culture, but we are going to the Eastern Plains of Colombia to this area. The name is uh, Casanare, and uh, this is like the Pantanal in Brazil. So to get to this area, you need to fly from Bogota to Jopal, and then you can take uh, like the transfer to, to your hotel. So in the past, uh, this region uh, was closed for like to tourism uh, because of the armed conflict, but nowadays it's totally safe uh, to travel to to this area. Um, so the highlights here are the Janeiro culture. Um, so you can have a, like a horse ride, enjoy the landscape, a sunset and sunrise in this area are really, really nice. Uh, you can also learn about the shores that the cowboys um, do like moving the cattle, milking the cows, um, and also you can enjoy uh, some of their traditions, like their music. Uh, the Janeiro music is really popular in Colombia. Um, and also here you can have kind of a uh, safari uh, to see the fauna of the place. So here you can see capybaras, you can see anteaters, you can see caimans, you can see like different species of birds, uh, you can see anacondas. So I went like six years ago to this area and we had like in a group and we had the chance to see very close an anaconda eating a caiman. We were like, I don't know, like three meters from the spot uh, and it was really, really amazing um, because the wildlife here is really, really good. Um, and well, uh, the accommodation that we offer here, one of the best options um, is Savannah Orinoquia Lodge. 
So to get to this area, you need to take um, like the flight to Jopal, and then from Jopal, uh, you will take uh, a transfer by car for about two hours and 15 minutes, or you can also uh, have a private flight um, to Savannah Orino Kia Lodge, uh, well, in a charter. Uh, this place has six cabins, each cabin has its own like launch pool. Uh, they have a kind of a beach like by the river. Uh, you can like uh, do like uh, some artisanal fishing in the area. Uh, you can also have during the uh, season like a bonfire in the in the beach area with like music. Um, you can do bird watching, para trike also uh, in this in this lodge. So it's a really a uh, good option for natural uh, natural lovers as well. And last but not least, we are going to travel uh, to the Colombian Pacific uh, coast. So to get to this area, uh, you can fly from Medellin to Nuki or to Bahia Solano, that are the main two areas uh, for like um tourism um and you can fly also well from bogota to to Bahia Solano. so this is a pristine jungle uh, with a natural richness and also uh, this place have a, a rich culture with an african uh, background so for natural lo uh, natural nature lovers this is um, a really good place uh, for whale watching. The whale watching season is from July to, to October. Uh, so humbug uh, whales come here to this area during, those, uh, during this period. Uh, and you can um, like get like close, of course, um, in a sustainable way uh, by a boat to see uh, like uh, the, the the well, um, this region is considered uh, as one of the most diverse and also rainy areas on Earth. So it's not a beach destination because, as you can see, the sun is like quite dark, and this place this place uh, has a lot of rain during the whole year. Um, but uh, it's a good place for nature lovers. So uh, here you can also die uh, and you can also practice, practice a surf uh, because the waves here are really good. Uh, but you can also enjoy some other activities like visiting waterfall, waterfalls, uh, hot springs. Uh, you can also visit the mangroves here, like do some um, some uh, walks uh, in the jungle, uh, enjoy the diversity of birds. Uh, there are like endemic uh, species from this area. You can uh, see also a lot of reptiles and amphibians as well in this area. There is a, um, uh, there are a lot of turtles here. So you can go to see like the swamping uh, of the turtles uh, in this area. Uh, and of course, uh, you can learn about uh, the culture of the Afro-Colombians that uh, lives in this area, uh, like by having some cooking lessons uh, and also learn about all their traditions uh, that they have. Um, and uh, in terms of accommodation, so we suggest staying like in Bahia Solano, in this lodge that is El Almejal, is uh, one of the best options in the region. Uh, it's quite basic, but they um, have like a really good infrastructure. Uh, they have well, electricity because in this place, uh, well, this is a very remote place, so you have electricity all the time, all the day. Uh, but this place has. Um, they have a like hot water and is a very uh, sustainable lodge. And the option 
uh, in Nuki um, is La Cuca is another a uh, kind of accommodation that we offer here is like more basic uh, but it is also really good they work with the communities with the locals uh, in the area um, they are also very uh, committed with the sustainability and as you can see here like like new keys are really good at watching you can see they were like very close to the to, to the beach area to the coast uh, and this is like the kind of um, accommodation that you can find here. Um, is basic, you will not f uh, have here in La Cuca a uh, hot water or air conditioning, but to be honest, it's not like really necessary uh, because it's really uh, fresh, um, this area. The gastronomy is also really good in Nuki. So thank you so much for your time and I hope that you have enjoyed uh, this, uh, this webinar and that you are prepared to offer these new uh, destinations um, and included in your itinerary. Thank you so much for this presentation, Carolina. It was amazing. I didn't know that you can find those places in, in Colombia. It was in Bogota, in Cartagena, but never been on those places and they look really, really amazing. No, you're welcome. Thank you so much for your time again. And of course, all the questions that you have, we are here to help um, and of course, well, these were, as I mentioned at the beginning, remote destinations, but of course we uh, offer uh, all the other destinations that, uh, well, all you know, the, like the coffee region, Cartagena, those destinations that uh, people have in their mind, so. Great, thank you so much, Carolina. So for our travel advisors connected live today, if you have any question or any doubt about um, any of the destinations presented by Carolina, or you have another question from Colombia, uh, please feel free to type those on the control panel on your right. Um, I have the first question for you, Carolina, and it's regarding those uh, two last destinations that you presented, Nuki and Maya Solano as they yes. seem to be really very sort of remote and isolated. Um, we have one advisor wondering what is the, is, is there internet connection there or what about the, the Wi-Fi or the internet sign on there? Well, they, the connection is really bad. So it's a place like mm -hmm. just to relax and disconnect there. Are, uh, for example, in El Almejal that is in Bahia Solano, they have a, some connection but yes well the weather here is quite tricky and of course this area is very isolated so so yes like you will not have like wi-fi all the time you will find connection sometimes so okay okay perfect and the other question we have from one of the attendees here is all those destinations that you presented today are year-round destinations are or is there any destination that you might recommend okay don't go on those months to this place so like in the case of caño cristales well the idea is to see the the, the river and um, this is a seasonal destination so from june to november is the, the like the the period to visit caño cristal uh, otherwise, you will see a completely different la landscape that were like uh, the rocks that uh, and the, like the pictograms uh, that you uh, saw in the presentation. And well, Nuki, well, the Pacific region uh, is beautiful all the year round, but of course, most people visit this place like to see the uh, to see the wells, the humpback wells. So it's the only thing, but you can visit the country all year round and all, like these destinations all, all year round. Uh, Caño Cristales, well, like the in, in the dry season, 
that is December to March, uh, the panorama is completely different. And from March to, to June, like you don't visit Caño Cristales, it's like the only, the only season, March to June, to, well, to the beginning of June. To from avoid. June, sorry? To avoid Caño Cristales from March to June? Yes, because like uh, in like the dry season that uh, well the part well the um, landscape changed completely from December to March, and the place is closed uh, from from end of March to the beginning of June, because okay. uh, in June start like the the season when you can uh, see the river. So yes. Okay. Okay, awesome. Then another question we have for you and regarding all, all these lodges that you were presenting, are they all inclusive and do they require a minimum night stay? No, they are not uh, all inclusive. Well, these places, well, for example, I'm going to start with uh, Tairona. So in the area near Tairona, uh, for example, Cayena Beach Villa uh, has a half board plan because, well, the area is quite remote, so you don't have like many options, like you don't have options in the Tairona area to go to have dinner at night. Um, but like if you have a uh, excursion, well, during the day you have lunch out, so there is like no need uh, to have a uh, lunch included uh, at the hotel. Uh, Caño Cristales, you have more, uh, you have um, breakfast and dinner at the lodge in Cala, in Canu, in uh, La Manigua Lodge, uh, and lunch is uh, during the excursions that you will have. Um, in Savannah Lodge, you have that is in uh, in the plains, you have the three meals, uh, but uh, it is not a all inclusive plan, no, these are not like all inclusive um, options. Okay. And, and okay. In the, sorry, and I forgot the Pacific, uh, you have also like like the three meals, but that's, that's it, yeah. Okay. And regarding the Tetacoa Desert, we have a, a travel advisor asking which is the hotel you, you use or you recommend on that area? Well, there is one hotel uh, in the area. The name is Betel. The style is quite uh, different, I can say. Um, so it is not for everyone. And well, we suggest staying there like one night because like the highlight, of course, well, is the, is the desert, but uh, also like uh, there is an astronomical point in the area but all the um, like the highlights are located um like six hours for like from Tatacoa Desert that are like the archaeological sites like San Agustin well you don't go just to Tatacoa Desert for one night because it is like quite a uh, far just to go for like to see the desert for one night. So we always like um, combine Tatacoa Desert uh, with San Agustin, which is an archaeological destination. But okay. the tell and that is hotel, hotel that you were okay. But that hotel that you were mentioning, maybe it's uh, sort of simple or rustic. No, it's not rustic, but it has a. Oh. different style is like have like a tiger or yes it's like uh <laughs> the style is not for everyone and a lot of models with yeah like go there so it is like the ambience is quite tricky there <laughs> so okay yeah so i can send pictures uh, it's not our favorite because i think that it is not a place like to rest sometimes they have music uh at night or like that depends because as i mentioned this place is not like a an area that you travel to stay as a foreigner like you don't travel to mm -hmm. colombia just to stay there so most okay. of the visitors that they have the cases that they have are locals and you know it's a completely different market so 
So yeah, okay. Okay. Awesome. Do you know if any of the lodges that you are presenting today uh, have uh, any sustainability certification? Yes. Um, La Manigua Lodge, uh, they have. El Almejal that, I, uh, that is in Valle Solano, they also have a sustainability uh, certification. And um, uh, uh, no, I think that just those okay. but i yes i'm going to check okay. yes okay well we can check that out and maybe include yes. if we have more information we can include that on the follow-up ah, i'm sorry can you, uh, yeah. the one in the, the the one in the amazon they have a, a certification uh, okay. because they are very focused on on sustainability so yeah great Great. And then the last question that I have here on the control panel, is there any vaccine, um, are there any vaccinations required to visit any of these locations? Well, it's not mandatory, but we suggest at, at these places are like quite remote that if you are in the jungle and like um, the vaccination suggested is a, the yellow fever uh but it is not mandatory it is not like that you have to have it and th like there is a regulation that after 60 uh well you don't need this vaccination uh so so you can travel uh here like the only way that this um that this vaccination is mandatory to come to colombia if it is like before you have been in some other countries like uh, Brazil, Congo, well, other places, but not like here, it is not uh, a request, like, yeah. Okay. So if they are coming directly from Canada or the States, they don't need any vaccination? Yes, they don't. Awesome. Great. So that was very clarifying. Thank, thank you, Carolina. We don't have more <laughs> questions here. So just to wrap up, um, as I was mentioning at the beginning, we will be sending early next week uh, this presentation, this uh, recording, in case you want to watch it again. We will be also including in that follow-up email the PowerPoint presentation that Carolina was using um, during her uh, presentation. And we will also include the Q&A, so you have all the different um, questions um, uh, she was answering today. We have a very last question, but I think that maybe we need to look at that because it all depends on airlines. We have a travel advisor asking about flights from Canada. Is there, do you remember, is there any direct flight to Bogota? Yes. Yes, yes. Avianca and also Air Canada, they fly from mm -hmm. Toronto. And okay. yes, like I think, the the only one is from Toronto, but Air Canada and Avianca they fly direct to Bogota. Awesome, awesome, great. So thank you so much, Carolina. Um, thank you to all the attendees, all travel advisors for connecting today, for taking the time to attend today's um, webinar, Colombia, a country to discover. We we really, <clears throat> sorry, value your 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 time. Um, and we hope that we can um, help you and your clients with either any trip to these destinations in Colombia or if you have clients interested in doing the traditional Bogota, Medellin, Cartagena and Coffee region, please give Colombian Journeys DMC a try. Um, you and your clients, I can assure you that they will be extremely happy with Colombian uh, journey services. So this is all for today on my side. I will leave Carolina you the last uh, few seconds if you want to say so, uh, something to the to our attendees today. Thank you so much on my side for attending uh, the webinar and please check your inbox uh, on Monday. You will be receiving the follow-up email with all the information, all the materials. Over to you, Carolina. No, thank you so much again for your time and all the things that you need from Colombia. We are here to help. Uh, if you need like trainings, 
uh, specific for your team, like we are more than happy to help you with that, okay? Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great afternoon.